Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make three cozy vegan soups for fall, but this is not your average fall soups video. All three of these soup recipes are healthy, they're wholesome, they're very easy to make, but they all have a little something going on that makes them a bit different. Like this one, for example, is my crispy tortellini and tomato soup, and it's actually a really cool way to zhuzh up store-bought soup. So we're going to take a little help from the grocery store, and I'll show you a neat trick that you can do with any soup, really, that seriously takes it to the next level. I'm also gonna show you how to make my broccoli spinach soup in a garlic bread bowl. Great for those of you who are trying to get more veggies but don't love eating just plain vegetables. And then this creamy vegan sweet potato bisque is so silky, so creamy, and it happens to be very allergen friendly. There's no nuts, there's no soy, all kinds of really healthy nutrients though, and just so, so cozy. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. All right, so typically a bisque is made from seafood, but it is a rich and creamy soup, and so this is why I called it a bisque, because it just has the silkiest, creamiest texture. It's a very simple recipe. We're just gonna start with one yellow onion. I'll add my onions to a saucepan and let them saute on medium heat for about five minutes. You don't wanna rush this step because sauteing the onions will really help to build that first layer of flavor in the soup. If my pan gets too dry, I'll add a little splash of water or some broth and just make sure that those onions cook until they are translucent. Then I'll season with salt and pepper. I like to layer in flavor when I'm building soup, so I season every step of the way. And then I'm gonna add in my sweet potato, which is the star of the show. It creates not only a beautiful fall color, but a really silky, creamy texture. And then the flavor of this soup, the thing that makes it stand out from all the other kind of similar soups that I've had like this, is red Thai curry paste and some turmeric. Then I'm gonna add some white beans. This is going to add silkiness, richness, obviously added nutrients, but because white beans are mild in flavor, it's a really great way to add in some legumes. Then I'll add one can of coconut milk and I'll fill up that can and add one can of water. And that's it, you guys. It's gonna immediately smell like ginger and lemongrass and it just has so much flavor because of that curry paste. So we're gonna bring it to a boil, then cover it and simmer on low for about 15, 20, 30 minutes, however long you like. Basically, you just want the potatoes to be fork tender. Then I let it cool and blend until it is like velvety smooth and you can really smell all of those delicious spices from the red Thai curry paste and it's a little bit sweet from the coconut and from the sweet potato but it's nicely balanced with the salt and the pepper and I really like to top this with extra pepper too because I think freshly cracked pepper on this creamy sweet potato bisque is just heaven. I really love serving this with some crusty, crispy bread. You know, the kind that's like crispy, crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. It's so good dunked in this soup. The soup is also packed with vitamins, lots of vitamin A, some fiber. We got protein and iron from those white beans too. So really wholesome, very meal prep friendly, and I can't wait for you to try it. All right, this next one is really fun and it's a semi-homemade version. So we're gonna take a little help from the grocery store because, you know, life is busy. You gotta take some help when you can, but we're gonna make it feel homemade and kind of gourmet with these crispy vegan tortellini on top, which are kind of like croutons, but they're like crispy, crunchy on the outside and then cheesy and creamy on the inside. So I'm gonna do one bowl with some soy milk or plant milk, the other one with some breadcrumbs, and then I'm gonna take these vegan tortellinis, which have ricotta cheese and vegan ricotta cheese and spinach. You can do the plain cheese ones if you like, whatever you like is good. And then I'm gonna dip it in the plant milk, and then I'm gonna go ahead and dredge it in the breadcrumbs. Now these breadcrumbs are already seasoned. They've got Italian herbs and salt and pepper, but if you want, you can sprinkle in some more garlic powder. You could do more Italian herbs, more salt and pepper you could even grate in some vegan parmesan cheese and then make sure that that's all mixed together in the breading that is super super good but that's it i'm just going to go ahead and put these in the air fryer i recently got an air fryer and i'm loving how convenient it is and how crispy it makes the tortellini but you can also do this in an oven super super easy i mean you could even deep fry them if you're feeling up to it but i really like just popping them in the air fryer i spritz them lightly with some avocado oil and then i bake these for about eight to 10 minutes at 400 
degrees. It's a little bit longer in the oven, but basically just cook until they are golden brown and crispy crunchy. They're gonna stay nice and cheesy in the center and they're gonna be perfect for whatever soup you like. But I personally think tomato is the way to go here. So I'm gonna warm up my soup. I'm gonna add my tortellinis on top. Sprinkle with some vegan Parmesan cheese. I use the one from Biolife, which is one of my favorites, and some fresh basil. And this, my face, I have no chill. I was so excited when I tried these for the first time. I was on cloud nine. These are seriously heaven, and if you want, you could even serve these as a little appetizer with warm marinara sauce. That's good too. The recipe is down below. All right, next I'm gonna show you how to make two things. First, my creamy broccoli spinach soup, and then a garlic bread bowl that is so good with this recipe, but it's also good with any soup recipe, to be honest. This soup recipe is packed with veggies, and I like to use frozen veggies, so it makes this a really convenient and very budget-friendly meal. We're gonna start again with a yellow onion and saute that down for about five minutes. And then I'm gonna add in four cloves of garlic. Garlic is really one of the predominant flavors here and it is just so good in this soup. I added a little splash of water so that my pan didn't dry out because I don't want those onions to brown. I want them to soften and become sweet and translucent. Then again, I'm gonna build flavor by seasoning as I go. I add salt, pepper, and dried oregano, which instantly smells incredible with the garlic and onions. I'll let that cook for another five minutes or so, and then the rest is really very simple. I'm just gonna add in some frozen broccoli, and then I'm gonna add in my frozen spinach. And actually, my sister came over recently, and we did a little taste test of all three of these soups. This one was her favorite, and she really liked that it was creamy and delicious, but also packed with veggies, and this is just a great way to get more veggies in your diet if you're someone who doesn't love eating plain veggies on their own. It's gonna become super nice and creamy with some cashews, which I just throw right in, with some veggie broth and some water. Now I measured this recipe and the ratios with regular veggie broth, not low sodium, and I made adjustments because there's also water in this recipe, so that's one thing to note. You wanna make sure you use regular veggie broth. Then I just bring it to a boil, turn off the heat, and let it cool slightly. And I'm just gonna blend until creamy, creamy smooth, and you might recognize this clip from a recent What I Eat In A Day video. I've been eating this soup for lunch a lot. It's so great to have a big batch of this prepped, and just whenever lunchtime rolls around, I heat it up. I love to put pretzels in it as little croutons. But if I'm feeling a little fancy, I love to make a bread bowl. I'm gonna use this beautiful country white loaf and you wanna look for one that's crispy, especially on the bottom because you need to have a little bit of structure with the bread bowl. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slice off the top. I do about a third of the, of the loaf. I slice that off and then I'm gonna go ahead and just pull out the center. You wanna make sure that you don't pull out too much. Like you don't wanna get too close to the edge so that it's too thin. You wanna have a little bit of bread around the edges so that the bowl has some structure and that way when you add the soup, it's not just gonna fall apart and spill all over the place. But don't worry, none of the bread in the center is gonna go to waste. What I do is I save this in the freezer and then come Thanksgiving, I will toast it up to dry it out a little bit and throw it into my stuffing. So. Nothing goes to waste here. Then we're gonna add lots of flavor to the bread bowl by creating a garlic olive oil mixture. So I'm gonna do garlic granules, dried herbs, salt, and olive oil. If you want, you can do fresh garlic. You can chop up a clove of garlic and that's really flavorful and delicious too. But in this particular recipe, the soup is quite garlicky. So I find that garlic granules is just perfect. And then you're just gonna kind of, you don't necessarily need to brush. What I do is I mix the mixture together and then I kind of dot it on to the bread. This makes enough for two bread loaves, this olive oil mixture. And you just kind of lightly brush it on the top of the bread loaf, around the sides, and definitely in the center. Then pop it into a 400 degree oven and toast until nice and golden brown. As you can see, this soup gets super creamy and smooth. I love topping it with a little bit of vegan sour cream and some black pepper, but my sister really likes it with vegan cheddar cheese and she'll kind of mix the cheddar cheese in and that's really good too. Again, black pepper, so good here. And this is ready to serve. I feel like it looks really impressive even though it's pretty simple. 
And this again is just a really great meal prep friendly recipe that makes it so easy to eat your veggies. It's garlicky and that oregano that we added and the garlic just really works together to create such a robust flavor with the broccoli and spinach. So even though it's a predominantly veggie soup, it's got tons of flavor. But if you're hungry for more, I've got some more soup recipes on this channel. This is my vegan pasta y fagioli. And in this video in particular, I really geeked out on food science and kind of how to build flavor, how to develop vegan flavors for a traditionally non-vegan soup. So I love this recipe. I love this video. It was really fun for me to put together, so I will link it below. But I've also got a pumpkin potato and rosemary stew with homemade biscuits. And this is a really fun one too, because you actually make the biscuits and then the biscuits will kind of cook on top of the stew and it's so good. So if you want those recipes, they will be in the description box below along with all three of the soups that you saw in this video. I hope that you enjoy it and I hope these soups make your fall just a little bit cozier. I can't wait to hear which one you wanna try first. So let me know in the comments which soup you're gonna make and I hope that you have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye everyone.